we work so hard to actually try to fit in, yet we wonder why we have such tr- such a problem on doing that. And why do the people who seem to shine, what makes them different? We're going to be talking about what that it's actually okay to be different today on Relaxed Mail. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail, a podcast that helps men change their relationship with themselves. I am your host, Brian, and I am a men's life and mindset coach who is here to help you understand that you don't have to suffer at your own expense. You can live your dream, and I encourage you to set, then pursue your goals. So join me as I change the mindset and attitudes of men so that they can be the leaders of their families and their destinies. Hey man, hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, so today, welcome to episode 12. And uh, real quick before we uh, get everything rolling, just wanted to quickly talk about uh, the Relaxed Mail camping coach that we're going to be having over on May 7th through the 10th. And just wanted to express just real quick because I would... I, this is a an event that I'm putting together that just is to help men get together and to form new relationships, form new new bonds, and to help us help each other to get around the the feeling of being stuck. They know that there's something bigger out there, but they can't go and progress beyond it because of x y and or z and so i'd like for you to be able to join if you'd like if you're interested i'll be talking about more of this more probably at the end of the show but i wanted to just real quick at the beginning talk about uh, the camp and coach because you're going to find that a lot of the a lot of the excuses you tell yourself are actually complete and total uh bunk and you're and it helps you to be able to actually to step beyond that uh, that hang up that you have help change the mindset that you're you're telling yourself and change the story and the path that you're on so that you're on one that where you're being fulfilled you're able to help your your family and you're able to to grow and be the best man that you possibly could be so if you're interested please go over to uh, relaxedmail.com forward slash live event all one and we will uh, see you on may 7th so anyhow that's what makes you different and why is it okay why do you want to be a completely different person as opposed to the rest of the crowd um a good example of this is today you see now i'm going to kind of make myself sound like i'm an old dude and all right well i'm not i'm not a spring chicken but still at the same time i'm not that old but you see a lot of the people these days have got tattoos. Now, what was one of the main reasons you asked when you asked somebody, why did you get that or why they want to get a tattoo? The one of the one of the reasons that you hear is that, oh, I want to be different from everybody else. Yet, if you look today, your originality is very commonplace. It's kind of like star bellied sneeches. I don't know if you remember that from Dr. Seuss, but you had you had those that had stars among theirs and those who didn't. And it was kind of a racial – it was supposed to be talking about uh, race and why uh, – worrying about uh, what race you are is is complete is, – is not needed and not, doesn't make any sense. When in all reality, it's, it also fits in with – they see somebody who – doesn't have stars upon the R's and all of a sudden other people are there are people who are the the I'm gonna call them thought leaders the 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 people who you know they blaze the trail the pioneers and they go forth and they always seem to have the most success they're the ones who venture out so those first ones who go out and face the discomfort of standing out okay yeah they're kind of brave they're kind of neat i remember seeing tattoos when i was a kid and i thought that was just weird and bizarre and and actually kind of interesting that this guy had gone through and had put, had a picture drawn on his uh, on his arm a lot of times it was like a topless hula girl or something like that today 
people who have tattoos is very, very, very commonplace. As a matter of fact, I'm starting to see more neck tattoos now than than any because people are still wanting to be questing to be to be different. Yet they end up following the same everybody else, and instead of being um, being unique, they end up being very commonplace. Uh, I would have never thought that I was the only one in my in my on the step side of my family who, or very immediate step side of the family, who doesn't have a tattoo. I figured you know one of my sisters uh, wasn't going to have one, but and but. Both sisters now have one. I think they're uh, my uh, oldest. The older sister has a uh, husband has a tattoo, and I, I know their kids who are over the age of eighteen have tattoos. And so it was just kind of interesting to see that that whole see the whole thing of of a tattoo tattoos supposed to be a mark of individuality. Yet it's very very commonplace. So to be different is a lot tougher and a lot harder to actually do because you're you're having to actually do, be somewhere where other people aren't um but when you take that time and you step out of your comfort zone and you get out where you're in the lead or you're doing your own thing that's where you actually learn to start and start learning how to shine a lot of people though don't want to stick out like a sore thumb they don't they want to try to they try to their hardest to fit in look at kids in high school one of the best times when you could actually stick out and those who uh who stand out and are brave enough to actually be different in in high school god bless them because they're usually the ones who are going to become a lot more successful and a lot more forward in their in their actions and a lot more intentional in their actions than the kids who are in the special little clique that they, everybody has to be the same. They all, in my day, they had the, we'd actually, uh, would fold and roll up the, the legs of the, our pant legs, but we'd fold them over. So they were really just right up next to our, to our, uh, to our legs and our next to our ankles, as opposed to, um, as opposed to like where you would see like high waters where people would roll them up, like they're fixing to walk into a river. Um, but we, uh, in high school, it, the the we work so, uh, so hard, and we, they the kids actually actively ostracize someone who has the brave is brave enough to actually be their own, do their own thing. They want, they don't want to. They most kids understand that. Hey, being your own is is actually kind of an uh, inherently admirable thing to be your own person. But because you're, uh, if somebody steps out of the of the mold and steps out of their norm in high school, they were often, you know, ridiculed. They were, they were tested. They were, there was a kind of a baptism by fire, so to speak, because there would be a bit of teasing and a bit of, uh, uh, of elbowing and a bit of maybe even a good bit of bullying. If depending on how far away from the herd you strayed, if you pass that test and you're like, ah, well, who cares what you think? I'm my own person. And you stay true to yourself. You find that a lot of those people start to admire you and even respect you a bit. While if they can get you to inch forward and inch closer to them, that's where you're, you know, where they're claiming that you're you're supposed to be. That actually makes a makes the situation a bit worse. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or not, but when you're following the crowd, you really don't know who the leader is. You're not leading for sure because you're too busy seeing doing the exact same thing that the person in front of you is doing. While if you actually take the if you're out leading, you may by yourself be by yourself for a while. You may be, you know, trucking across the country and like uh like uh, Forrest Gump and it may take a while, but eventually you kind of start bringing people along with you. People start hearing about this weird guy who's just doing nothing but running back and forth across the country. He's 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 all right, Ed, as you would say. And people start to they don't even know what understand what your message is. They interpret what your message is and they apply it to their life. And if it fits them, they follow. But following a crowd isn't being true to yourself. Look at uh uh, Howard Stern. Look at oh, he just died here recently. Um, Don Imus, 
and even uh, you, whether love him or hate him, Rush Limbaugh, at first their careers were just there. They would get up, they'd go do their radio show, and nothing happened until they basically told they because they followed what the station manager said. It's like, hey, you need to do this and this and this and this and this, and just be here and you know make a comment from time to time, but nothing to. Do. They the manager wants to play it safe because he's worried about the about the the, the advertisers. While all of a sudden, you know, Don Ima starts saying the first thing, the things that come to his mind. And he's known as a shock jock. And then, you know, Howard Stern in the same way. All of a sudden, he just decided, you know what, screw it. And he hit the screw it wall. And there is this, you know, a wall that men come up against. And they're busy doing their own thing or what they think that they're doing their own thing until they hit that screw it wall. And once they break through that barrier, that's when so much of who they are starts to starts to blossom and, and bloom and come out and, and be be seen. Rush Limbaugh was known for being fired several times uh, from jobs until he started to go his own path, do his own thing. So everybody, everybody has that same moment when they cross that line and they say, screw it, and they, they go past it. Uh, Trip Lanier has a very similar word for that, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm going to try to keep this family friendly. So instead of dropping the F bomb, but it's uh, the F it barrier. And once you bust through that barrier, you're, it's, it's very, it's very freeing. I mean, I'm, I don't think I have made it across that barrier yet. I am bouncing off of it. Uh, I do still, do stuff and then we'll go, Oh, well, no, no, no. People are not going to like how that was phrased. That's, and, and, and I'll worry, you know, I'll worry about that. You know, you've got this whole, you know, cancel culture, which is a very great example of, Hey, you do as you follow us though. They want you to want to have all these different colored, uh, heads of hair and, and multiple piercings on their face. And they don't. Um, but yet if you step away from what they're doing, and you blaze your own way, they want to attack you. They want to say, no, you're, you're wrong on that. And you're, and they, they try to shut you down. They, the whole cancel culture, uh, mindset has come from somebody who is doing something that goes against what they want to do. Now, a lot of people want to take going your own route and they take it to a, a an incorrect, uh, extreme, because there's a difference between being yourself, being true to who you are, and rebelling against society. If society has a lot of very good rules set in place, and it's not to keep you down. You can be your own person within the uh, within certain rules of society, and still be still be you know okay with with how society goes. You can actually you can push a barrier against society, but uh, people who want to, you know, or completely rebel against society, they often run into several different problems of their own ostracization, ostracization, ostracizing themselves. My tongue doesn't want to bounce that way. And so you, you have these, um, you have the people who are out to try to please everybody. You're, you've got these folks who are not out for themselves. And it's not, it's not a selfish matter, but it's a, where they're wanting to please everybody. And the old saying, you can please some of the people some of the time, none of the people all of the time. They, it, they run into that. And it's, people pleasers are a lot like that. People pleasers are some of the, whether you want to agree with it or not, is, is, doesn't matter. It, people pleasers are liars. They will do what they can to make sure that the person is pleased with them. It is a, a very. It's actually a very selfish act where it is all about. I am going to please you, um, and if you, they will. If you ask them to mow the lawn, well, yeah, yeah, I can mow the lawn, and they may mow the lawn, but they may also overbook themselves and not be able to mow the lawn when they said they were going to mow the lawn. So people pleasers, though they put on a very large, a very solid face, uh, and very put on a, a on a facade. That's the word I'm looking for of. Hey, I'm going to do what I can to please you. They're wanting to please you so that they feel good about themselves. It's not blazing a path 
And it's not that you're to go off and say, well, screw the, uh, screw the other people, because that's not what that's about. That's you helping other people is good. As long as you're coming to it from a, from a, a, a servant's mindset and yeah, it, you feel good, but it's not your, your joy that you receive from being able to help everybody is secondary to the fact that you actually help them to the next level. You, a lot of people who are blaze their own path also s- say no a lot. They, hey, you want to go to uh, go to the uh, to the mountains today? No, I've got my thing I have to do. I've got to take care of my stuff. Now, when I'm finished with my stuff, I can meet you out there. But at the moment, no, I can't leave. I've got my stuff I've got to do. And some people take that as being, uh, again, selfish. But at the same time, it's not selfish when you're making sure that you take care of yourself first. So when you're, so why do you want to be different? Well, besides for what I explained before, where you've got, you have a, a barrier that once you get past it, you're, you become a lot more successful. It is when you're, you have to take care of yourself, take care of yourself, be taking care of what other people think is a lot more as or taking care of yourself as opposed to taking care of what other people think. Let me get my words straight here. You you're showing people that hey, I have an inner strength. I really don't have to have other people to fluff up my my sense of ego. I don't have to be told you're you're a good guy. You can go out and you can uh and it, it the pressure then becomes upon it comes upon you so that you're having to, you know, constantly air your own, have someone air your ego up. If you are a confident man and if you are a, are going, uh, going your own, I'm not going to say the going my own man going their own way because that whole movement is actually a really chicken way of, of looking at stuff. Well, I'm just, society doesn't want me, so I'm just going to go out my own way. And okay, you're, you're, you're taking your, that's a, that's coming from a victim mindset. A guy who is his own person and is comfortable with himself doesn't take a victim, uh, a victim mindset. They don't act like they're being attacked. You can attack them all they want and they're going to, you know, okay, whatever, dude, they're going to, they have, an extra level of, I'm, I'm going to say, emotional armor. They have that that keeps the the personal attacks at bay, while a person who is busy trying to trying to please everybody, the moment they get criticized, is when they shrink up and they feel that you're being a, you're attacking them, and and they they struggle with that. While people who are at the point of where they're angry and they're rebelling against society, again, that is. A lot of of victim out, uh, victimhood being being expressed that everybody you know is ma- mean mean to me they're 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 rude and all this other stuff and so they take that victim mindset and they try to apply going on their again going on their own way and rebelling against society just really doesn't do it you're you're still holding yourself back even though you think you're you're a, a trailblazer. You're you're it, tra- you're not able to do so. You to be able to go and to be able to have a have a confidence about who you are and what you stand for takes time. It, there's the the work of of making sure that you you have your story. You you know what your beliefs are. You and if somebody had. Uh, approaches you with a different set of beliefs, you're actually going to be okay with that different set of beliefs. You can look at it and you can actually even inspect what they believe and you can you can look at it and go, yeah, okay, well, I can see how you would think that and you have no problem going off and examining whether that particular belief, that part of the, uh, of the story actually is true or if it's not. So, being different, standing out from the crowd is actually a very good thing. Standing out, being your own man, 
allows for other people to admire you and be able to see that you've got it. And now, are you going to be attacked? Well, yeah, because all of a sudden you're showing other people that they're being the sheep, that they're just they're following a crowd, no matter whether they know why they're following the crowd or not. You're showing them that it is possible to be your own person. And that cognitive dissidence that is created from that really causes people a lot of internal strife and stress. And and it, it disrupts the story that they tell themselves. And if you can disrupt a story, you can, and you just, even if you disrupt your own story, if you can actively examine that story and apply the mental processing power to actually make any changes that need to be made, you're going to be a lot better off. You're going to be a lot uh, sturdier in whatever decision you end up making. So today, I'm, it's going to be kind of a little shorter episode. So I, today, just be okay with being different. You stick out like a sore thumb. You do something goofy. Be okay with that. You are a, a, a massive uh, Star Trek and Star Wars crossover nerd. Congratulations, dude. Let that freak flag fly. Be be yourself. As the saying, uh, as uh, Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. Above all else, to thine own self be true. You, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be true to who you are. And a lot of people will try to take that mantra and turn it into, well, this is why, this is why I am being, a, a, I'm, I'm doing something that nobody else likes. It's not that you're doing it to rebel. You're doing it because this is what, what you are. And you don't have to have a crowd follow you. But invariably what happens is a crowd ends up following you because you have shown that you can be your individual self. You can blaze your own trail. You can be that one guy, that Marlboro man, and everybody is actually okay with it, even if you do smoke or not. So, all right, but guys, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to close it there. Again, I have the live event come by. If you need help and you want to try to process, if you're having trouble processing stuff, you're feeling stuck, you, you, I've got uh, a lot of, uh, I've got openings for some, uh, for some coaching. And if you'd like to be able to have that be coached through the first couple of, First hour, hour and a half that we talk is definitely going to be free. We're going to sit down. We're going to ha- discuss uh, what our object- what your objectives are, what you're trying to uh, to to get done, and just see if uh, personality wise, if we're a fit. So just it, there's no no pressure on that. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you. We're gonna set you up for a, for a six month session. It's going to cost you thirty thousand dollars. Well, of course, it's not going to cost you thirty thousand dollars, but you know what I mean. It's if we aren't a fit, it will, I will always be able to get something out of that conversation. And even if we're, like I said, if we're not even, even if we're not a fit, man, I, I've had a good time at least being able to talk to you. So come by, give me a ring or sign up and uh, schedule a time for me to talk with you. And we will uh, we'll talk to you then. So anyhow, guys, go out there and embrace who you really are because that's what you were made to be. You aren't meant to be anybody other than you. You can't be Ron Howard because there's already a Ron Howard running around. You can't be anybody else but you. All right? So y'all take care. Lots of love. Talk to y'all later. Bye.